Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, and welcome to the final part of the Superman Marathon, at least for the first marathon. I might do another marathon, which I do uh, Superman Returns, Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, and uh, Justice League. But that, that's a maybe. I might do that if I actually want to do that, because I really... Oh, I've only seen like two out of the four films in that lineup, and I really don't want to see the other two. So, oh, this is going to be hard. Uh, that's going to be hard. But anyways, um, let's end the marathon with Superman 4, The Quest for Peace. Um, now, this, this was my third favorite Superman film for a while. Because I thought, at the time, when I was like 10 or 11 years old, when I started getting really into film, I thought this was a little, not at, uh, not that much better, but still kind of better than um, Superman 3. Uh, but now I've started to realize that this film is incredibly stupid. And I still think it's a pretty funny film to watch. Um, but it's just, it's not as good as 1 or 2, or even 3 for that matter. Because at least that one's actually meant to be kind of funny. This one is funny for all the wrong reasons. And, yeah. So, let's go over the details really quickly. Um, so, the uh, this film was made uh, on a budget of $17 million and made only just over $15 million at the U.S. box office. And worldwide, it made over $36 million. Um uh, so that shows you that this was meant to be a failure. Um, this was actually directed by Sidney J. Fury, which I never heard this guy until, you know, obviously Superman 4. Um, so yeah, uh, so the plot for this movie is seeing the United States and the Soviet Union engage in a nuclear arms race that could lead to Earth's destruction, Superman... Uh, for the final time being played by Christopher Reeve, decides that he must take action. He collects the nuclear warheads from the world and throws them into space. Meanwhile, Superman's nemesis, Lex Luthor, played by Gene Hackman, has broken out of prison with a new scheme. He clones, he clones Superman with radioactive material to create Nuclear Man, played by Mark Pillar, a being just as powerful as the Man of Steel. Now, you guys may have heard in the plot synopsis, plot synopsis that Lex Luthor returns. I mean, um, well, yeah, Lex Luthor returns, but he's played again by Gene Hackman. Now, besides Superman, he's probably the best part about this film. No doubt. Um, um, so, actually, most of the main cast comes back, including Lois Lane, and she has a much bigger role than she had in Superman 3. Um... But they used the same ending for Superman 2 in this film as well. Uh, and I believe it's... Not even... I think it's still, like, at the end of the first act. Um, but anyways, let's talk about the new cast. Uh, Mark Pillar as Nuclear Man. Um, I can't really say anything about him. Because, one, uh, he doesn't really act in this... Well, I mean, he acts in the fight against Superman. But he doesn't, like, speak act. Because he was doped over by uh, Gene Hackman. So the voice that you hear in the film is Gene Hackman and not Mark Pillar. Uh, John Cryer as Lenny Luthor. Um, I'm just going to say it right now. This, he was probably the least... My my most hated part about this film was Lenny Luthor. Because he was so annoying. And I get that he came from Pretty in Pink. I don't care. I honestly don't care about John Cryer at all. Um, Murray Hamilton, um, Mur or Murray, uh, um, uh, Murray Hamilton or Hemingway as Lacey Warfield. She is the new love interest in, I believe, Clark. Um, because I know there's a double date between with uh, Lo Lois and Lacey. Where uh, Superman has to keep on changing from his Superman, from like his Superman identity to his Clark identity, 
And so I think, yeah, I think she, I think Lacey is attracted to Clark, and it's obviously Lois is attracted to Superman, and so it's like a double date thing, and that's probably the one of the most cringiest scenes out of the whole film. And Sam um, Wanamaker, I think that's how you say it, plays David Warfield, where he plays um, basically his part in the film basically takes is um, he's trying to take over the. Uh, uh, Daily Planet and turn into a regular newspaper with a new girl on the front cover and um, he claims that uh, it's gonna sell him all, it's gonna sell a lot of newspapers which means it's gonna make a lot of money new girls maybe but to the puppet guy that's most likely not gonna sell any anything at all um okay so really quickly Let's talk about the DVD, uh, the uh, editions that I have, and going beyond this, and then the soundtrack. And then we'll talk about uh, fun facts and rating and favorite scenes. Um, so, currently, the edition that I have is the, the standard, as the bare bones, or not bare bones, but the deluxe edition that came in the four, uh, four Christopher Reeve pack, which is also like the Superman 3 DVD. Um, so on the, uh, so there's the front, the spine, and the back. Uh, so special features, um, it really only has a commentary by co-writer, uh, Mark Rosenthal, and, well, co-screenwriter, uh, Mark Rosenthal, additional scenes, and the theatrical trailer. So yeah, that's literally everything on this disc. Um... So yeah, this is probably the shortest Superman movie ever coming to at an astounding 90 minutes long. That's it. Um, and again, like the previous two films that we talked about, um, this film is only available in the United States on Blu-ray as a part of the box set. Um, now, the soundtrack... Um, well, I'll show it to you right here. Uh, this was actually the first soundtrack released of the uh, films, which is very surprising. Um, so it uses the poster design. So there's the front. This is a limited edition right there. The side. Other side. I think that's the right side. Oh, nope. Can I hold it like this? So there's that side. That side. And the back so yeah this has um it only has two discs uh so the first disc is the soundtrack and or the tracks in chronological order the second disc um the first eight tracks are in um are in chronological the uh, nine ten and eleven are alternate and source mu uh, source cues and then 12 through 19 is source music and songs by Paul Fisherman. And this was limited to 3,000 units. Um, so compared to the other two, um, um, so the uh, Superman, the first the Superman the movie uh, tr uh, soundtrack had uh, 50,000 units. And Superman, the Superman 2 had uh, 3,000 units. And so, yeah, these came out. This, so, this one came out first, and then the Superman 2 and 3 uh, soundtrack, and then the first film. Because I guess they knew that that one was going to get a lot of demand. Like, I mean, all of these got a lot of demand, but, like, they knew, like, the first one was going to get the most. Um, so, yeah. Um... And, so, okay, so that's it. So, let's go on to the two fun facts I have about this film. Yes, I have two. Because, because mm, honestly, there's a lot of interesting stuff that went on behind the scenes of this film. Um, okay, so, well, uh, really quickly. Um, this film was released on July 24th of 1987. Um, so the first fun fact it was that Milton Keynes student as New York. 
So with the budget at seventeen million, they obviously couldn't film in New York. Um, um, so they and plus this was basically a Canon Studios film. So not only they couldn't really film in uh, New York, they also couldn't really film at I believe it was Pinewood Studios or Elstree Studios. Or no no wait a minute, I think it was Shepperton Studios actually in England. That's where the first, I think, first three films were shot, like, for the flying scenes and stuff. But, uh, this one, because, like, first two had over 50 million. The third one had, uh, just about 40 million. So, they're pretty big budgets. And then this one, you get 17 million. For a Superman film, that's pretty low. Even for the 80s. So, what they do, they, uh, save money by going to Melting Keynes. Um, to film all the Metropolis scenes and then use the Canon film studios or the sets or sound stages for the flying effects. Uh, fun fact number two is that more... Oh, well, I should probably grab the paper first. Um, more than 40 minutes were, f uh, were cut out from the original film. Um, so yeah... So this film is 40 minutes long, and this film was about to be like 130 minutes long. There was a whole pl uh, subplot about how um, Lex made a Nuclear Man 1, and it failed. Because um, it basically just acted like a big retard, if that's the best way to say it. Um, or the nicest way to say it, because I can't say those other words, because PG content. Um... But, uh, this, it has, and then, it has a lengthy fight with uh, Superman next to the club, which is on the s deleted scenes portion of the special features on the DVD, and I believe on the Blu-ray, because I don't own that. Um, um, uh, I know there's some deleted scenes with the Mark, uh, p uh Pillar, um, uh, Nuclear Man, which is, I believe it's called, uh, Nuclear Man Mark Two, between him and Lacey, and, um, and, like, some scenes with, like, Clark getting ill, like, after he's got the scratch on the neck by Nuclear Man, there's a little bit of extended footage with him stumbling around, and, f before he finds the green crystal, um, and, um, there was a additional ending scene after when Superman gives the press conference that the like if like the people of the world would want it want peace so bad that their governments will won't have any choice but to give it to them. After that scene, he has to he actually goes to where Jeremy is, flies him up into space. Which again, uh, well I'll talk about that in a little bit. But how do how does Jeremy breathe in space? Okay. But he's like, um, was like, Jeremy, I want you to tell the world what do you see. And he's like, I just see, you know, shapes of like cities and stuff, but I can't see anything down there. And it's like, it's a, it's a, it's a nice scene. Um, and I think it would have been nice if it was in the film. Um, but, um, it was cut for, I believe, pacing issue. I, well, actually, I think they just cut it down just to, you know, fit in a lot more theaters. And two scenes were actually in the European and Asian cuts. Because I believe if you get a Japanese uh, laser disc, the, the two scenes are added in, which are um, the tornado scene where uh, Christopher Reeve's daughter is um, in it, when uh, Superman has to save the daughter of a family from a tornado that a nuclear man has made to distract um, Superman. Um... And then the second scene is um, Nuclear Man kind of hijacks a nuclear missile in Russia, which is and, like he sets up, like he shoots his, like, his little finger uh, things, and he causes the missile to go haywire and is about to explode. And then obviously Superman comes in and saves the day. So those are, those are the two scenes that were added in the, or left in the European and Asian cuts. Everything else was basically deleted. And like I said, about 40 minutes were deleted from uh, Superman 4. Um, 
and I would personally rate this film a 6 out of 10, slightly below Superman 3, uh, certainly the worst out of the Christopher Reeve films, but um, it's, it's slightly lower than Superman 3, but not as good as the first two, obviously. Um, uh, anything else I need to mention? I don't think so. So, uh, yeah, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the Superman marathon, and um, and leave uh, contact me on like either social media or like well, yeah on social media if you want me to do a, a Superman mar uh, second Superman marathon and what movies you want me to review next. So uh, hope you guys enjoyed and see you guys in the next movie review or next video that I do. Live long and prosper. Ow.